Well, I'm excited about today's episode is we're going to do something a little different. A lot of times on here, we look at who not to follow or who are false teachers or what we shouldn't be believing like false doctrine. But I want to point you to who we should be following, who are people who are preaching the word, men of God that are pointing people to Jesus and that are biblically sound. Stay tuned. Welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me, it comes directly from God's Word. And I'm excited about this episode because we're going to really look at some of my favorite pastors who I believe are some of the top men of God who love Jesus, who are preaching the Word, and are, are really doing an amazing thing for the kingdom of God. So let's get started. First of all, let me be very clear on the outset that the, the pastor's role, number one, according to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, is to preach the Word. They're not to preach themselves or to sit there and make it about them. It's to point people to Christ and to literally equip and feed the flock the Word of God. And that's what these men, I absolutely believe and have seen and watched for years, are doing. So let's get started. Number five is Jim Osmond. Jim graduated from Miller College of the Bible in Canada. He's the pastor of Kootenai Community Church in Idaho, in which he began that pastorate in 1996. He's authored several books, such as God Doesn't Whisper and Truth or Territory, which you can see actually on YouTube. He does a big series with Justin Peters, who he's good friends with. It's amazing. You should check it out. He refutes the prosperity gospel and also people who think they can hear the voice of God. He refutes them and shows really what the Bible actually says. He's also a great exegetical teacher of the word and someone I highly recommend. Here's a video of him preaching. Check it out. All right. God can. God can do anything that he wants to do. That we're not when we say that God doesn't do something, we're not putting any limitations on his power because we're not talking about what God can do. We're talking about what God has revealed that he does do. So could God speak to us through dreams? He could, but I have no reason to believe that he has or that he will or that he needs to because scripture is sufficient for God to tell me everything that I need for life and godliness. So God could do it, but I don't believe that he, he is or that he will. So I'm not expecting it. I don't exegete my dreams. I don't keep a dream journal so that I can try and go back and see what God might be trying to tell me because I don't believe that God tries to do anything. Number four is Costi Hinn. Costi, obviously you recognize, some of you recognize that last name. He's the nephew of prosperity pimp, Benny Hinn. And, the, and, and Costi was involved in that lifestyle for a long time before the Lord graciously saved him. Now he spends his time pastoring and renouncing and refuting the word of faith and prosperity gospel. He graduated from Dallas Baptist University and Midwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. He was the pastor um, of Mission Bible Church in California for seven years, and then just recently moved to Arizona, where he's now the pastor of the Shepherd's House Bible Church. I love listening to Costi. He is, he's relatable. He preaches the word articulately and biblically and exegetically. I think you will absolutely love it. Here's a video of him. Check it out. Suddenly I realized Jesus doesn't exist for my glory. God is not a magic genie for all the things I want. I exist for His glory. I'm not in this to get money. I'm in this to be a servant. He's the master, not me. So right there in my office, I begin weeping over the commentary, tears down my cheeks. I vowed to preach the true gospel. I repented for my former ways. I cried out to God for mercy. I thanked Him for opening my eyes. And through illumination, the scales fall off and I realize this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to shepherd God's people faithfully. Number three is Mike Fabares. Mike is the founding pastor of Compass Bible Church in California. He has been in pastoral ministry for over 30 years. He graduated from Moody Bible Institute, uh, from Talbot School of Theology, and Westminster Theological Seminary. He's heard all over the world um, on a radio program called Focal Point Radio Program. He has authored several books, including Preaching That Changes Lives and Raising Men, Not Boys. Let me tell you right now, I listen to Pastor Mike on the radio each week, um, and it, it, it challenges me, it equips me, I get pointed more to Christ, I grow in his word, and I just, I love Pastor Mike's, his delivery. Again, very relatable as he goes verse by verse, line by line through scripture. Here's a clip of Mike preaching, check it out. 
I was the worst of all sinners because I was persecuting the church. I was signing off the death decrees of people in the church. And he says, yet God did that so that I might be an example. Here's the words to it. That I might display God's perfect patience as an example to those who would believe on Christ for eternal life. So be careful when you're looking at people and saying, you know, come on, Richard Dawkins, never. ISIS fighter, never. Right? Someone who hates Christianity at my work, never. Don't say that. Be careful. Number two, one of my top favorites is, is Dr. Steve Lawson. Uh, Steve Lawson is the professor of preaching at the Master's Seminary in California. He's the president of One Passion Ministries. I encourage you to go check out his website. There's a whole wealth of knowledge and sermons there uh, to check out. He graduated from Dallas Theological Seminary. He's the executive director of Expositor Magazine. He's the teaching fellow at Ligonier Ministries. He's a regular preacher and pastor at Trinity Bible Church in Dallas. He's authored many books, including my absolute favorite book, um, and it's entitled, It Will Cost You Everything. It's a book that I recently went through with my boys, and it will challenge you, it will equip you, it will point you to Christ, it, will really, it really explains really what it takes to follow Christ. It's not just something we take lightly because it will cost you everything you have. And I'm telling you, Dr. Lawson is amazing. He and I have interacted before. Um, I love following him. He is just a man of God who I absolutely like, adore watching and listening to. And his laugh, by the way, um, is infectious. And uh, he has no problem calling out false teachers. So watch this clip as he calls out in his sermon, uh, Joel Osteen. Check this out. Give us some men who know the truth. And who will declare the truth? And who will stand with Athanasius and Polycarp and Calvin and Luther and Whitfield and Edwards? And who will declare from the housetops that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation? And last but surely not least is my absolute top favorite, and that is Dr. John MacArthur. You know, Dr. John, uh, he graduated from Talbot Theological Seminary. He has pastored Grace Community Church down in California for over 50 years. And he is one of the best expository preachers I know. And if you haven't noticed really quickly, all these pastors that I'm recommending to you, they preach the Word of God line by line, verse by verse. They do not do topical sermons and, hey, how, you know, five steps to having your best life now and, you know, you're going to just experience this and how to have a good marriage. No, they go verse by verse, line by line of what God's Word says. Whether it's hard to swallow, it might be a hard pill to swallow, but they tackle it. Also, uh, John MacArthur started Grace to You in 1981, and it's now reaching millions of people around the world. He created the Master's University in 1985 and the Master's Seminary in 1986. He has exposed and refuted the charismatic movement. He did a huge, big uh, seminar called Strange Fire um, a number of years ago, which the Lord used to help deliver me and get me out of the charismatic movement that I was in for 20 years. Um, he's one of the most bold pastors I know has no problem calling out false teachers and warning people of false doctrine. 
Uh, he has written hundreds of books and even commentary series. And he just came out with the Legacy Standard Bible, which I use exclusively in a lot of my sermons, a lot of my videos, my memes and stuff, because it is solid. It is absolutely amazing. It's even better, I believe, than the, the New American Standard Bible, which is the most accurate word-for-word -word Bible out there. Um, he doesn't compromise God's word. And uh, I just absolutely love Dr. MacArthur. And if you want to check him out on Grace To You or on YouTube, um, I highly recommend it. You will be blessed, you'll be encouraged, you'll be challenged and even convicted because again, he stands on the word of God alone. Check this out. Here's a little clip of him preaching. Uh, I remind you of something that you well know, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the theme of all Scripture, not just the New Testament, but the Old Testament as well. We all understand that the New Testament is about Him, the four Gospels that give us uh, the focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. The first three Gospels tell the narrative of His life and death and resurrection. And uh, then the book of Acts tells us about His ascension into glory and uh, His sending the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit in the church. And then the epistles are written to explain the meaning of His death and resurrection. And then the culminating uh, book, uh, the book of Revelation about His second coming return in glory. So the, the New Testament focuses on Jesus Christ uh, widely and deeply. But it is also the theme of the Old Testament to look at Christ. It was the Lord Himself who said in John 5 that uh, you could search the Scriptures for they or they would speak of Me. And He was talking about the Old Testament. You know, as we wrap up this, this video, I just want to make sure you understand that I am not exalting men. I'm not. These are men absolutely that I admire and I honor and I want to recommend to you because so many times we talk about who not to follow. But these are men I absolutely wholeheartedly think you should. But let me be also very clear as I wrap up this video that this, these men should not take the place of your local pastor. If you're in a local body, of, you know, and you're, you're in a church where you're faithful and you have an amazing pastor who is preaching the word and is pointing to Christ and is shepherding you, that should be your number one favorite pastor. Just like mine. I have my pastor at my church who I absolutely love and, I, and he's, I'm under his spiritual authority. I'm under his teaching and he's an amazing man who I love and adore. So let me be clear that these aren't men that supersede that. We're thankful for them. I wanted to point them out to you and recommend them to you. And I pray that they will be a great addition to you in your walk with Christ. As you get your eyes on Jesus, you get your eyes in his word, and we keep going as we walk closer and closer with Jesus.